If you've ever been interested in electronics or anything related to engineering, chances are you've probably heard of something called Arduino. An Arduino is a small programmable board which you can use to interact with electric components to make stuff like light cubes, radars, wire bending machines, and even robotic arms. Now, every single person behind these amazing projects was a beginner at some point. And chances are, if you're watching this, you're probably one as well. And that leads to the main point of this video. How does one start learning Arduino? You could think that simply buying the board itself would be a great place to start, but that's not actually the case. An Arduino by itself is nothing more than a programmable board, and that means that by itself it really doesn't do anything. So to actually use it, you need to have electrical components for it to interact with. But then that might lead you to the question, what components do I buy to start with? And that's a very hard question to answer because not only are there thousands of components available, but oftentimes buying a single component can be extremely expensive. And that's because websites oftentimes want you to buy it in minimum purchase orders because they make profit when you buy more of them. Thankfully, companies thought about this and created something called kits which are like boxes full of electrical components, wires, and knockoff Arduino boards which are like fake Arduino boards that are compatible with the Arduino IDE which you can program using the Arduino software. And that eliminates the need for you to go out and buy batches of components when you probably won't use more than a few anyways. And while I have bought these in the past because I generally find them to be very good value for the cost, it's not something that I would recommend to a beginner and that's because of two reasons. For one, most of these kits don't come with instructions. That means that you're left with a box full of components that you don't know how to use. But if you are the kind of person that likes figuring things out by using online resources like Google, YouTube, or other things, then that might be all right for you. But in most cases, beginners will just try to put stuff together, fail, and then they just give up on everything because it's just not working the way they want it to. And oftentimes, the ones that do come with instructions, they do feel like an afterthought. Not a lot of effort has been put into them, which really degrades the learning experience. And finally, since these kits often come with knockoff Arduino compatible boards, which is like a fancy way of saying this is a fake Arduino that works as a real Arduino, they don't have the typical safety features implemented. On both cases, you would need to worry about things like overloading a pin, shorting a connection, accidentally using an unreliable power supply. I mean, even the real Arduinos, you need to worry about things like this, but in these, I wouldn't trust them as much as a real Arduino. Now, a little while ago, I received this in the mail by a company called Seed Studio that claims to have created an all-in-one super beginner-friendly kit for Arduino. And that's a pretty bold claim, especially considering that this costs basically the same as a real single Arduino without anything on the side. And just to be completely transparent, I wasn't paid to do or say anything, so I'm going to give as honest as an opinion as I can about this, but do take everything I say with a grain of salt, as my opinion might be biased because I got it for free. Having that out of the way, I'm going to go through what this thing even is, the things I like about it, the things I don't like about it, and what kind of person would want something like this. So straight out of the box, the first thing you'll probably have noticed is that this thing doesn't come with any wires. That's because all of the 10 modules on this thing have already been pre-wired. This means that unlike other kits where everything comes as individual components that you need to connect together, everything here comes as one piece, which means that all of the resistances have been taken care of and all you need to do is just hop straight into the theory and code to understand how it works. The small box also contains six growth cables which you can use to connect the main module to all of the other components should you decide to break them free from the board. But that has its own little problems which I'm going to get into later. The other side of the box also comes with this micro USB cable which you can use to power the main board, which by the way, behaves the exact same way as an Arduino as it has all of the pins and connections that an Arduino would have. Starting with the things I like, by far the thing I like the most is the educational content that comes with this in the form of a beginner friendly PDF that covers everything from how to connect it to a computer. It goes through lessons for every component with information relevant to that component, like for example what an analog and digital signal is. So for example, I'm confident that if I wanted to learn how to use this OLED display, if I go to the lesson about the display, it's going to tell me exactly why it works, how it works works and a practical example demonstrating it. And I think that the fact that every single component has this kind of detailed lesson makes the learning experience really interactive. And that's probably going to lead to beginners wanting to know more about electronics and getting into more advanced stuff later on instead of just getting frustrated and giving up. And since it has those kinds of examples, you can take code from one lesson and apply it to another lesson to be able to see how to make these components interact with each other. Another thing I really like about this is that when you plug it in for the first time, it comes with a demonstration program that not only shows how these components work, but what kind of results you can get out of a board like this. Although I do think it's a shame that the demonstration program doesn't come with a demonstration the buzzer, which is basically a component that buzzes. 
Another advantage of everything being pre-wired is that you don't need to worry about resistances because all of these small circuits in these modules, as they call them, already have the resistances on them. Whereas in a normal Arduino, you would need to do the resistances yourself or you would risk frying the component itself or a worst case scenario, the board. And I think that the fact that they've taken out most of the difficult parts is really good since it introduces a beginner to the world of electronics in as simple of a way as possible. And that's always good because it's going to give them an idea of whether they like it or not and want to go deeper into it or if they didn't like it and just want to give it up and try something else. And if you would want to use this for an individual project, you aren't limited to the board itself. This has connections all over the place which you can use to just break apart and then use the growth cables to connect the main board back together with the individual modules. Although this does come with its disadvantages which I'll go over in a bit. Now that I've gone through the things I like about it, it's time to go through the things I don't like about it. And the first thing that really bothers me is the choice of modules. On their website they say that they chose the 10 most common Arduino modules, but specifically there's one module on this thing that I find to be very, very useless, and that would be the air pressure module. Like, I don't see a single scenario where a beginner would use this module other than to just display it on either a terminal or the OLED display as they did in the demonstration. You aren't going to really affect the valley by blowing on it. You probably aren't going to take this thing hiking up a mountain, and you most definitely don't have a vacuum chamber sitting at home where you can stick this thing in to read the value. And there are so many more components that you could just get such better value out of. For example, a rotary encoder, which is this 360 degree rotating thing that you find in volume change dials on televisions or literally anything. Or for example, an infrared sensor, which you could use to decode the signals coming out of TV remotes when they're communicating with the television. And even if it makes the board slightly more expensive by like 50 cents or a dollar, it's really going to make it a lot better than it having an air pressure sensor, which basically does nothing. Now for a device that's so heavily focused around the fact that you don't need to use cables, ironically, my second issue is with cables. You see, this is the micro USB cable that came included, and it's very short. I'm the kind of person that likes to have everything I'm working with directly in front of me when I'm working with it. And the fact that it's so short means that if I actually want to have this thing in front of me, I either have to have this cable sitting right across my keyboard or just use a completely different cable. So it's not really a big issue since you probably have this kind of cable laying around since it was the most popular cable like three years ago, but even then it is something I wanted to mention. Another cable related issue I have with this is related to the growth cables. You see, these cables are very expensive. For example, four cables are going to set you back anywhere between two to four euros, depending on whether you get official ones or some like cheap Chinese ones. But even then, the fact that you can only use this within the growth ecosystem means that the most use you're going to get out of this outside of it is by maybe plugging in individual wires and using it as an extender. Although I do give them credit for making it possible to use this cable with over 300 different types of modules, although they are also slightly expensive, probably because they've been engineered to just work as you plug it in. So now that I've gone through what I like and don't like about it, in what scenario would anyone want this? So as you've probably seen in this video, the overall theme for this kit is simplicity and ease of use, which comes at the cost of slightly more expensive cables and also the modules. And since the entire concept of this is for it to be a kind of modular plug and play, I don't see it being used in a permanent project, not only because each each individual module is kind of expensive and it would be a waste to use it in an actual project, but also because it would be cheaper to just make that same project using the actual individual component if you have it and know how to use it. But if you're planning on using this only as a learning experience, so for example, in a classroom where I can totally see a box full of these individual modules and cables that students can just take, test and put back once they're finished for the next batch of students, then it would make perfect sense to have it. But if you are someone that already has experience and knows how to use Arduino at a basic level, then this is probably not going to be it for you. But if you are a complete beginner that has never touched Arduino or electronics before, this is definitely something I'd recommend as it has a very low barrier of entry, not only because of its price, but also because it's as easy as it possibly gets. And it's going to get you past that stage where you don't really know if you want to keep doing Arduino or commit to actually buying a normal kit. And yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. If you want to learn how to make custom coded bots, then this video might be for you. And if you want to see me make two different bots with different methods, then these two videos might be for you. I'm Kian, and thank you for watching.